this on and we will start hello everybody welcome to thursday boy it's a great day if i do say so myself it's just turning out fabulous i hope everyone's having a good day um my day is amazing as always <laughs> um Anyways, welcome to the Redesign with Prima group on Facebook. I'm Cece from CC Restyled. I'm a furniture artist and um, brand ambassador for Redesign with Prima by Prima Marketing. And um, I'm going to be working on this fun little nightstand um, today. So um, basically, um, we're going to be working with transfers and cutting and placing and layering those. Um, so I will, I will run through some basics of using transfers for those of you who maybe are new to them or maybe haven't used them yet and want to or, um, you know, uh, maybe you're not an expert, but I'll try to just make it simple and easy tips and, and things so that I don't, if you are, you know, a transfer user and I don't want to lose you here. So um, anyways... I've got this nightstand here, and it's a pretty plain nightstand. I mean, it's got some some rope trim around here, some detailing. So it's it's not super plain. It's very um, oh classic, very classic uh, nightstand. And I um, I like things that, I like things that are very ornate with lots of detail, curves, and things like that. But I also um, on the end of the other end of the spectrum, I like things that are very plain. Because the more plain it is, the more you can dress it up and give it a personality all its own and add molds and transfers and stenciling and uh, whatever else you can think of um, to uh, create a one-of-a-kind piece of art. And so that's why I also like plainer pieces of furniture. Not only um, just the fun, detailed, curvy curvy things, but um, I like... I like I like a good uh, blank canvas to start from. So that's basically how I'm looking at this piece. Um, and it happens to be painted in buttercream from Dixie Belle. So um, it's white like a canvas. Um, and today we're going to be using some decor transfers from Redesign with Prima. Um, seeing as how July 4th is quickly approaching, I thought I would go ahead and use some patriotic transfers. There's a couple different kinds, and I've got both of them here because I'm not 100% sure exactly how we're going to place those. Sometimes I have no idea how I'm going to work on a project as far as transfers and embellishments, and sometimes I have every idea, and I know how it looks down to the T. And this is one of those times where I'm just going to kind of go with what I think looks good and trust the process and have fun. Uh, this isn't a custom project. It's not for a client. This is one I'm just doing um, to kind of celebrate the upcoming holiday. Um, and um, I think it'll be fun. I, I really like, I've done a couple of American flag pieces before and I really enjoy using them. Um, it's a lot of fun. So um, the, the patriotic transfers from redesign that we're going to be working with today are um da, 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 this one's called patriotic <laughs> imagine that it's called patriotic this one is called america so we got patriotic and america i mean aren't those some killer names for flag transfers so this one america is just it's the flag and it comes in two pieces okay so you have to piece them together or just cut them in place them like we're going to do. And I'm not trying to defame the flag or anything like that. I have utmost respect for it. I'm just trying to uh, make some art, okay? So let's not, let's not take it too seriously here. Um, this is, sorry, those are the two pieces it comes in. And you just got to line them up there. Fairly straightforward, simple. And, um, oh, if you're logging on, say hello. Um, I, I don't know. Let's see. Hey there. Hey, everybody. <laughs> you guys crack me up. Um, so yeah, if you hop on, say hello. We're just going to work on some placing and cutting of transfers. We're going to be mixing different transfers. And we're going to be making a love child out of the uh, the two patriotic, the patriotic and the America transfers. We're going to be, uh, um, we're going to make a uh, love child of these two. And we're going to get a little hippie with it. And we're going to add some wildflowers from the floral collection. So um, we're going to give it kind of a peace, love, and happiness vibe, right? Because that's kind of what we need right now in this world. Peace, love, and happiness. So we're going to give it a little bit of a flower 
child flair with the uh, wildflowers and our American flag. So um, this one here that is called patriotic, it's got um, these four different um, kind of designs here. Wait, no, so four different designs. So there's a flag, a flying flag, USA, and then we've got this little shape with stars, which I think is super cool, especially cool. This transfer is awesome, um, not only for the 4th of July holiday, because even though, yes, everything's red, white, and blue on the 4th of July, pay, you know, being patriotic doesn't really kind of, it's not a seasonal thing, okay? Um, being patriotic in um, standing behind your country and believing in your country and being proud of your country, um, those are kind of um, things that are a constant or they're not, you know, they're not the kind of thing that just should float around by a holiday. So um, the, they apply all year round. That's what I'm trying to say. And these are great. Well, they're both great, but, but the one that comes in the four pieces, patriotic, that one's super great because um, it's really good for smalls, you know, because of the four pieces. You can do um, framed art. It's good for a small mirror, a mailbox, um, a little table. I, had, I actually had a little folding table um, just a little guy that I was going to do with, with one of these transfers, and then I decided to do this instead. But, um, you know, folding table, perfect for your picnic or your 4th of July celebration. Just pop up your little folding table, and it's all patriotic and ready. I mean, that's a, I thought it was a good idea, and I still might do it. But, um, I mean, the, oper the, the, the options and uh, possibilities are endless with this. You can um, put it on so many different things. So, um, don't just think, oh, it has to be on furniture. Oh, I don't want patriotic furniture. Um, what I'm showing you, the, the cutting and the placing and the layering, it, you can do it on and anything, really. Not just furniture. So, don't forget that. So, I'm going to go ahead and start. I, I think I'm going to go ahead and start with these four. I'm going to open them up. Um, let's go ahead and start down here. Let's get our biggest drawer um, kind of down and designed and see what we can embellish with off of that. So... Um, there's a couple ways we could go about this. So we could take, here's the flag out of the, um, the, the one transfer, the patriotic transfer. We could, you know, kind of cut it apart and put the flag in two different um, areas. So on the bottom and then on the top, you know, and create a flag. We could, you know, do it this way. You know, we could, um, well, hold on a second. Let me move this back. Can you see my whole piece? Yeah, okay. I mean, we could do it, you know, at a diagonal, wrapping around the corner if we wanted to. We could have it falling off the top, you know, um, kind of like it's laying on the top of our piece if we wanted to. Um, we could use it on the side. You know, we there's, there's so many possibilities. So there's that one. Um, and then there's USA. Okay, USA. And we could do that one here. And then the stars and stripes up there. Um, I'm thinking I kind of see USA on the top, though. I'm thinking I see the USA on the top, most likely, in the corner. In the corner on the top, maybe. Um, and then there's uh, the actual shape of the United States, which I love this one. I love, love, love this one. I don't know that I want to use this one um, on this project. Um, but I do love this one, and I can see so many different things with this shape, this America shape, like a stained wood uh, stained wood background sign and then you put this on it you know and kind of distressed and um, they're just I see this on a lot of different things so I like that one I think I'm gonna hang on to that one for later though and this one I enjoy as well but I see this one more as um, in a frame or something or on a square front piece that will just be that I don't know if I'm gonna use this one if I do it'll probably be cutting out the flag and We'll see. We'll see if we end up needing it. But as of right now, I think I'm going to stick with the USA and um, the Stars and Stripes. Um, I do happen to have a one of these America, the one that's just the big flag that comes in two pieces. I have one open, and I have a little bit of um, scrap pieces of my um, transfer from the last time I used it. So I'm going to see real quick what kind of scra scraps I have left. Because I'd like to try to util utilize my scraps first before I, you know, have to cut into a new transfer. And maybe I can use something here before we go that route. So 
Um, if we are going to do stars on the top and stripes on the bottom, we could do this. Um, we could do, you know, it's almost long enough, but you know what? We're going to be adding our wildflowers, so we can always kind of fudge this area over here and put some flowers on it like we were going to do anyways. Uh, or we could center it and do that. Mm. Oh, let's see. Let's think about that one for a minute. And then here's our st our stars. So um, it's just a little patch of the stars that I had cut out from a, a previous project. And I think that actually that may fit right in here really well. I mean, it just kind of makes sense that we put it in there, right? Like it just kind of makes sense we put it in that little... Uh, that little inset area on our piece. So I think we're going to stick with the stars there. And then that kind of has me thinking about these stripes. So um, like I said, we could kind of do them over here in the middle. We could do them this way. Um, I'm kind of thinking we do them this way coming down from um, our stripe or maybe even over here. It doesn't matter. Maybe over here. So we do them kind of this way. Um, if we wanted to, we could cut this in half. And I could put one piece right here and then patch in another piece right there if I want to carry my stripes all the way across. I can, I can do that. I can cut it and patch it in. I may do that. Um, we'll get down one half and see how it looks, and we, we might end up just patching in another, um, another piece of the stars and stripes. Stars, stripes, keep it simple. Um, yeah, I think that sounds like a good plan. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and start with our flag. Um, our stripes. Okay, so we're going to start with the stripes vertically. Um, basically, I'm going to measure, so see how I have on my piece, I think you can see it from here. Um, my, my drawer front is flat, but it's got this bevel edge. Okay, so there's a couple ways I can apply this transfer. I can go all the way up to the very, very edge of the drawer behind the top, and I can apply it to the contours of my bevel. It's a little trickier, um, to do, but you can do it. It's, it's definitely doable. Um, I've done it many times. Um, the transfers will conform to, to the bevel. Um, but you can also uh, line it up with this very inside, or this, you know, this um, kind of edge. You can see that. You can all see that edge there, right? See my little edge on my drawer? That's pretty typical on, on drawer faces, right? Um, to have that edge. So um, I think I'm actually going to line it up just like that and make it fit right in my little drawer um, drawer space or front front of my drawer space. I don't know what to call, what to call that little area, my little rectangle. Um, and the reason why I think I want to do that is because visually when I'm looking at the top and the bottom after the transfer's on, if I'm looking at the top, I've got this this trim right here that's like an inch, inch and a half thick, inch and a half thick. I've got this trim. So if I am going to do anything down here, I want to have a border that's about close to that same um, um, measurement all the way around. It's just more visually appealing. So say I plastered this flag, the stripes all over the entire front face of the drawer, and then my top drawer had a big fat border around it. I don't think it would look quite as um, cohesive and like it was intentional. So um, I, for, for balance purposes, I just want to kind of keep it Keep it um, cohesive and do a you know a one inch or one and a half inch border all the way around my transfer on the top and the bottom. So that's what I'm going to do here. And I'm going to go ahead and um, yeah, hopefully we have enough to patch in. I think we will. So I'm going to go ahead and measure with the oh I forgot my measuring tape, so I'll just use this. I'm going to go ahead and measure with a measuring tape or ruler. Um, how big I need my piece to be. And since it's not long enough to go all the way across, that doesn't matter. We don't need to measure that. We know it's going to fit. Um, I just need to get my height. So my height, I need to cut that transfer piece 11 and a quarter. Wait, no. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and a quarter. 7 and a quarter inches high. Okay, measure twice, cut once. Unless you have endless supplies of, of transfers, then you can measure all you want and cut willy-nilly and who cares if it's wrong. But most of us are not in that scenario. So 11 and a quarter. Um, you can mark, I'm going to mark 11 and a quarter. Um, why do I keep saying 11 and a quarter? Was it 7 and a quarter? Oh, gosh. 
Here we go again. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven and a quarter. I'm just going to go ahead and measure seven and a quarter. Um, from the edge of my, my print. Okay, so you're going to have the print edge, and then you're going to have the clear edge. Can you see the, the little clear adhesive outline around the edge? I don't know if you can see it or not, but um, see where the red stops and the white stops? There's a clear adhesive edge about, about an eighth of an inch, a um, little less than an eighth of an inch all the way around. Um, and I'm not including that in my measurement. I could cut it off if I wanted to. I'm not going to, but there are sometimes some instances where I do just cut it off. Um, seven and a quarter, right? Not eleven and a quarter. Oh, you're gonna hit her. Seven and a quarter. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven and a quarter. And the best way to get a, an accurate line all the way across is to measure three spots, okay? Not one, not two. Measure three spots and then connect the dots. That's the best way to get a most accurate um, measurement, like cut, okay? There's a little tip for you. All right, so... I would normally be doing this on a table, a flat surface, a tabletop, or on my paper cutter, but I don't have my paper cutter with me here, and um, if I lay it down on the floor, you can't see it, so I'm just trying to kind of hold it up so you can see it. Okay, so I'm going to make one more measurement here. I guess if I was using the, measure, the ruler the right way, I guess I could tell what measurement I'm doing e a little bit easier. Okay, so... Seven and a quarter. Okay, so sorry, I got my three dots. Three measurement dots. I'm just going to marry those or connect the dots all the way across with the straight edge. Like, uh, what well, was it, Pee Wee Herman? It was like, oh, connect the dots. La, la, la. Connect the dots. No, anybody? Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Probably not. Nobody ever knows what I'm talking about. All right, so we're just going to cut that bad boy right straight across with scissors. Um, I, I usually prefer to use a um, paper cutter with when I'm cutting my transfers um, to a specific size or straight across. Um, but like I said, I forgot to bring that home with me. Um, but it's so great. You get these nice, precise, straight cuts and lines and measurements are uh, much more accurate. And also, the, the paper cutter I have... Um, that I got at, I think, Joanne Fabrics or Michael's, one of those two. It's, um, I think, a 16 or 17 inch opening on the paper cutter. And so transfers fit this way through the paper cutter perfectly. I'm talking like perfect. So um, I think I paid maybe like $15 or I probably had a coupon. So I think whatever 40% off of $15 was. And it was a super great investment if you plan on cutting um, transfers occasionally. Uh, one more little tip for you. I see a lot of people asking about uh, when you, when you um, line up two pieces of a transfer. So for instance, the, um, the flag transfer that comes in two parts that I was showing you that you have to line up. Um, occasionally when you line those up, because they overlap just a tiny bit, like a sixteenth of an inch, they overlap to line up. Sometimes you can see a little bit of an overlap line on your piece in the artwork. And not every time, but sometimes. And that's not very um, appealing. It's kind of unsightly. A lot of times you can't notice it, but there are some instances where it's pretty noticeable and it's um, not a good look. So what I recommend people do when they want to avoid that little overlap line, um, get you a paper cutter and you can cut off the overlaps if you, you just be very careful, take your time, cut the overlaps perfectly so you can butt your transfer pieces up next to each other um, when you're lining them up and you don't get that overlap. But that's, um, I would never do that with scissors, but um, paper cutter, way more precise for um, cutting, you know, straight lines for your transfers. But, you know, I'm crazy, so I'm just cutting with scissors like a crazy person. All right, so before I stick my transfer down, I want to make sure I line up the top and the side edges because if they're not lined up, it's going to look kind of silly, kind of silly. So 
I'm going to kind of roughly line up where I want it before I stick it down and commit to its location. Once I'm pretty sure I've got it lined up at the top and lined up on the side, then I can go ahead and I've committed. There's no turning back now. I'm rubbing it on, and this is where it's going to live for the rest of eternity, people. Okay, so I'm just giving it a good rub on with my palm um, to kind of get it to make sure it's in place, pop any big old bubbles that might be under there. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab my transfer tool. So um, the transfers come with a little wooden stick. In case you are new to transfers or you haven't used one yet, they come with this little stick. And it works perfectly. It applies transfers just great. It does the job just fine. But sometimes we just want to be a little extra and make our job a little bit more easier. And um, you can get this fancy transfer tool. I call it my mermaid tool because it looks like a mermaid tail on both ends. See? Big one, little one. Got a little end, which mine's, mine's a little worn down from using it so much because I have so many muscles that it um, wears down my transfer tool. You might not have that problem. but. Um, so there's one end for like smaller spaces and here's another end for larger um, spaces and if you can see that little hook on the edge, see those little hooks on the edge? Those are perfect for going around um, drawer edges. See these little grooves I have? This little inset groove line I have all the way around is perfect for that. Otherwise I just use my fingernail but um, this is perfect for that and um, getting down in, you know, the little cracks and crevices that you might need to with a transfer. So it's just a little helpful tool, but it's not going to make or break whether you are able to successfully apply a transfer. So before I peel this off, rub it on and peel it off, um, I'm going to kind of just make sure, see what I'm working with on this side. It looks like I'll be able to line up right here. Okay, and match that up pretty good. And then I'm short a little bit down here. I'm short about an inch and a half down here. So we can either take the pieces that we're going to cut off of this scrap and patch those in there. We could do that. Or we could um, just put flowers on it since that's what we're doing anyway. So I'm not sure. Let's see how it looks once we get it all on there. And if you want to see um, patching in scrap transfers, we can do that too. Um, I've seen that question asked several times. I'm just kind of like a Band-Aid. Always keep your scraps because you never know when you have some, something fail or a boo-boo or you screwed something up by mistake and you'll need a little Band-Aid to fix it. And so that's where scrap transfers come in handy um, to use as a Band-Aid. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and rub on this guy. I like to go around the edges. Um, really well. Okay, and then I'm just going to make sure that I put a little bit of um, elbow grease into it and rub all over. Okay, rub it all over as best you can to the best of your ability, muscles. And the look at the bright side. If you apply a transfer, then you don't have to work out that day because you got your workout in, you know? So I know, I know it's a relief, right? You're welcome. Um, let's see, we're going to go around the bottom edge. Don't forget about that bottom edge. All right, so once we're pretty sure we got the whole transfer kind of rubbed over, um, beep, 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 beep. then we're going to start peeling from one corner slowly. And the reason why we're going to go slowly is because if it didn't stick as well as we think it was going to, we can put our backing paper back down and rub back over it just like that. Okay, so we're going to go slowly and make sure it's all sticking um, and adhering properly. And it looks like it is. This is awesome. I love me some American flag. It's awesome. Okay, so it's on there. Um, now we got to burnish our transfer. Burnish is a fancy word for rubbing in. Okay, so we're just going to, I take my palm and we're just going to rub all over it real good with our palm. Make sure we pop any bubbles, smooth out any wrinkles. And as you can see around our little edge here um, where I have that um, inset, that kind of groove, it's cracking and because my transfer, my transfer was tight over the surface and then when I push it into those grooves it cracks. 
The reason why I don't mind on this piece is because I'm distressing it anyways. So it's not even gonna, you're not gonna notice it. If I were not gonna be distressing this piece, I would have applied it just a little bit differently. Um, I would have taken, I would have started at the top to apply it, okay, rubbing it on at the top. And then um, as you work your way down, go into the groove, rub it on into the groove, and then continue rubbing it on all the way down. So instead of laying it flat and rubbing it on, you're gonna start from the top, rubbing it on, working your way down into the groove, back out, back into the other groove, back out. Does that make sense? So you're just rubbing on a, a, an inch or two at a time all the way down to make sure you get in your recessed areas. Does that, is that making sense? I hope it is. Um, I hope that that makes sense. If not, then I will, maybe I can show you, maybe I'll show you on this side what that process looks like. Um, you know, working with the grooves if you don't want it to be crack, cracked like this. But like I said, I'm going to be distressing this. Um, so no big deal in my book. Um, but let's go ahead and measure out what we need from this side of the transfer. And I'll bring the camera in a little bit closer. And I'll show you what I mean about applying it from the top down and getting in those grooves um, to avoid the cracking. And um, even if you do that, should, you, should it crack? Um, you can use uh, parts from another transfer or parts from, a, you know, scraps or um, a little tiny bit of paint that matches and fill those in with a little art brush, okay? So um, that, it's, it's no big deal. Um, don't panic if you have a transfer that cracks and you don't want it to be cracked. Um, don't panic, okay? 99% of the time it's fixable. It's just a matter of um, taking the time and effort to make the fix happen, you know what I'm saying? So um, let's see, our measurement was seven and a quarter. So we're going to go ahead and measure this one off. Um, let's see, wait, which side did we want to go with? I think we're going to do this right here. See how my red, red lines, when I line them up, I want them to be the same width as the rest of my red stripes, right? And look how this works out. It just so happens that when I make my red stripe the same width as the other red stripes, it ends right here on this white stripe. So I'm gonna cut it off right there. I don't even have to measure that. I'm just gonna cut it off right there on that white stripe. So that worked out pretty good. It doesn't always work out that way, but um, sometimes it does. And that means I must go buy a lottery ticket now because it's my lucky day. All right, so um, I don't even need to measure this actually. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut off on my uh, white line there and we'll go from there. Okay, so again, or if you're just hopping on or you missed um, what I said a few minutes ago about this cracking here. So I have this groove all the way around my drawer face, which is very common. And you can see this, this distressing right here. That's actually part of the transfer. This is printed into the transfer. That's not from anything that I did. Um, this is part of the transfer, the distressing. You see, can you see it? So um, it actually kind of looks like it's supposed to be that way, to be honest. But um, again, I'm going to actually distress it with some sandpaper. So it's no big deal um, on my end. But anyways, um, so what I did was I applied this flat. And then after it was applied, I pressed in to get the transfer in the grooves. Okay, so that's one way if you don't mind it cracking. And here's another way. If you don't want the cracking around the edges, or at least to do what you can to avoid the cracking around the, um, that little groove area, uh, here's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna peel off the backing paper slowly of our piece. Make sure it's all sticking to the correct side of the uh, transfer. I'm gonna, first I'm gonna line up my top, okay? I'm gonna line up my top and my side to make sure that I'm placing it in the correct spot and boom, lined up. We're all lined up, we're all lined up. So instead of putting my whole transfer down, I'm gonna start at the top, okay? And I'm gonna kind of rub on my top, okay? And then I'm gonna, there. I'm coming down to my groove, okay? My groove is right here, right here below this. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and push the transfer into the groove as best I can with my transfer tool or my finger or whatever. Okay, I'm pushing it in. 
so that it you know can get down in there and apply to that area and then I'm going to continue on down same thing with this side before we lay it all down we're going to just kind of take our transfer tool and get in that groove see how I'm doing that all right and then um, let's see so one thing I did not mention or account for um, when I was cutting this was, well, no, it was short anyways, wasn't it? Yeah, this one was going to be short, so it's not because I cut it too short. But one thing I was going to mention is when you are working with the grooves, you may want to add another um, quarter of an inch um, to your piece that you're cutting to account for the space you're losing when you go in the grooves. I, I didn't think to tell you that, um, but that's, that's always a good idea. And you can always cut it off with an X-Acto knife. Um, if it's too long. All right, so, ah! We're gonna get down in that groove. Shake our groove thing, shake our groove thing. All right, and then continue just rubbing the rest on like we do. Oh, I got that a little crooked, didn't I? I got this a little crooked, but um, it's okay. I'm not mad about it because we're gonna put flowers on here anyway, so. You know, when in doubt, if you screw up, just throw some flowers on it. And no, not, not every time you see flowers on my pieces does not mean I'm covering up a screw up. Not that, not what that means, people. All right, so let's just rub the rest of this on real quick and then peel it up. And then we'll decide what we're gonna do about this little area down here. So I do have a, a little bit left of this transfer I can patch in. Um, I don't know if you guys wanna see that or if we just wanna move on to some florals. I don't, it doesn't matter to me. Um, let's go ahead and I'll show you how to patch that in. I mean, it's, it's not difficult, but maybe some people help. It helps them to see that, to visualize how to band-aid in pieces of transfer. Um, all right, so we're going to go ahead and start peeling up that one corner. That's not on there all the way. Okay, we're going to start peeling up at one corner all the way. Okay, so... So now I've got it down in my groove, and you can see a little bit of cracking that has happened um, while I was pushing it down into the groove, but it's much, much less um, than the cracking from this side where I just um, laid it down and applied it and didn't try to compensate for the grooves. And so from this point, like I can live with this like if I did not, if I wasn't distressing it, I could live with this. But if you cannot live with that, um, you could always take little touch up paints and kind of touch up the little spots that are um, cracked. But since we're distressing this piece and the transfer is already distressed, we are not even going to waste any more time on thinking about that. We're just going to go ahead and measure. Okay, so we just need about, let's see. We're going to patch in some transfer and this one's going to be a little bit trickier. Um... So we're going to line this up here and we want it to overlap with the transfer that we've already applied just a little bit, okay? You don't have to overlap it a ton, but you want to overlap it a little bit. Um, and I'm going to kind of just take my fingernail and make a little bit of a mark so I know kind of roughly where to cut. And then I'm going to make a straighter edge with my, with my actual um, ruler, but I just want to know roughly where to cut. And since we're not really lining anything up, actually... I'm just going to draw it on here with the ruler because I can't see my little fingernail mark. Okay. Yeah, let's do it this way. Wait. Eh, no, that way matches better. Okay, let's do it this way. We're just going to line those up as best we can with a little bit of overlap. We don't need a whole lot of overlap. And let's see. I'm going to go ahead and... Yes, normally I would not be doing this on the piece. I'm just trying to be able to show y'all um, so you can see it without me having to lay it down on the floor. All right, so there's our line. We're just going to cut off a little piece to patch in. Easy peasy. Ain't no thing but a chicken wing, right? So we're just going to cut it straight across. Boom, boom. 
And um, do, do you see what I was talking about, about the overlap? Remember when I was telling you um, to take a paper cutter and slice off those overlaps and then you can butt them up together so you don't get this. This is what I was talking about. See that, that overlap line? Yep. You can take a light, a piece of fine grit stained paper and kind of go over it and um, get some of it to go away. But um, the best way to get it to not to be an issue is to cut off the overlaps and just butt, butt seam it up together. So, you know, you know what it means to butt it up together. That's what you do. But you just got to be a little bit careful, carefuler. Be mo careful, okay? That's all. Take a little bit extra time. And, oh, you know what? Let me see something real quick. Um, I needed to cut off just a little bit of this red, too. Just a little bit of the red is hanging over. All right. Let's see if it fits now. And every issue, like every boo-boo that you have with the transfer is going to be slightly different, you know. So, I mean, this is not going to be the exact same way you correct um, all your boo-boo mistakes. So, I'm, okay, so I'm just going to press that on. Then I'm going to use my tool and I'm going to go into my groove with the tool to get that transfer down in there. There we go. Rub it in, rub it in, and then apply the rest of the transfer all the way up. So um, there is this little corner here that we could patch in some more to, but I want to move on. I'm ready to move on. Um, I want to move on to um, the, I want to put on the stripes up top so that you can see, you know, um, them in the little panel, and then I want to add Actually, let's go ahead and move on to the flowers down here first, and then we'll do the stripes if we can get that far. Um, I mean, the stars, blah, I can't even think. Okay, so like I was saying, there is this little area down here that I could patch in some more of my scrap transfer, but since I'm going to be adding florals and things like, and leaves and things like that, I'm not even gonna worry about it. I'm just gonna put a flower on it. So, um, so we're just gonna save the time it takes to cut that out and just put a flower on it. Okay, so let's go ahead and peel off this and then that way you can see. Oh, one more, one other thing I wanna add. So some transfers um, have a little bit of transparency um, and some are much more opaque, okay? So what I mean by that is um, opaque is where you cannot see through it, okay? It's solid. Um, there's a few examples of opaque transfers, and then there's some that have different levels of transparency. So um, some, if you layer them on, or if you put them on dark colors, you can see the dark colors show through, or if you layer them on top of other elements, you can see those elements come through. Um, there's some transfers that I've put on stripes before, and you can see the stripes through the transfer. And I don't have a list of which ones are which ones are which, you know, I, I'm sorry that there's no list of which ones are kind of transparent and which ones aren't. I just kind of know from working with all of the ones that I had, which ones um, are and aren't. But that also plays a big role in whether you can see this overlap line or not. See how this transfer has just a little bit of transparency, not much, it's pretty much opaque, but it's got a little bit of transparency. So you can see the overlap line more than you would with, um, a more opaque transfer like say Rose Celebration or Imperial Garden. Those are pretty opaque. They're not very see-through at all, in my opinion. So, all right, so there's our, there's our straps, okay? There's our straps. We got our straps on. Now, we're gonna put some, okay, so I chose a couple of different transfers for this piece. Um, I like variety, okay? It's not because I'm indecisive, that's not it, I just, I just, you know, I like them all. Um, yes, waste not, want not. Always save your scraps. I can't tell you how many times I have said, I have messed something up or it's stuck to my finger, or it's stuck to the backing paper or it um, stuck to itself or whatever reason um, got messed up and I have a pile of scraps. I always keep my scraps and I have a pile of them and I can just pick a little petal or leaf or something like that to patch in. I've also been able to find the exact part that I need to, to cover that up with. And not once has anyone ever been able to tell that I did that. And 
Um, you can't really tell when you patch in um, mistakes on your transfers. Um, I've also had people I've seen in this group say, does anyone have this part of this transfer? I messed it up. And so, you know, I've said, yeah, I do. I'll mail it to you. You know, so um, you never know when you're going to want scraps. I've also done a complete end table out of all scraps before. So do not waste your transfers, okay? Everything has its purpose. Um, so, yes, variety is the spice of life. That is definitely one of my mottos. I love it. Um... Polly, when you try to layer transfers, it looks like a hot mess. And I'm wondering, do you not just like, is it because you don't like where you're placing them or um, is it because of another reason? Like maybe the transparency that I was talking about. Can you see them like maybe through each other? Maybe I don't see um, when I am layering them, I always start with the most transparent um of the transfers that I'm using, say I'm using three different transfers, I take the most transparent one and I lay down that first on the paint. Then I layer the, the next uh, most opa uh, transparent one and then the most opaque one on top. So if you put the most opaque element on top, you're not gonna see through it. And that's why I start with the most transparent because if you're putting it directly on the paint, there's nothing to show through. Does that make sense? So, um, I do, oh, never a good combination. Um, well, I don't know, I guess without seeing, you're probably just being too hard on yourself. I'm gonna go ahead and guess that it's all in your head. It probably looks fantastic. But without seeing it, I can't really tell you what, um, what maybe would help. I don't know, I'm sorry. It's probably all in your head though, I bet you. I bet you, we're so hard on ourselves, aren't we? Um, as, as women especially, and artists, Second, we are very hard on ourselves more often than we need to be. So, okay, so I showed you, I think I showed you the floral collection, which is these wildflowers, which is just screaming flower child, um, peace, love, and happiness to me with this flag. So I love that. But I also love some ruby rose because the flowers in it, to me, the colors are just very vintagey. Those are some very vintage-y looking flowers. And I think vintage with the flag looks really good. So I couldn't decide between vintage or um, flower power. So we're just gonna do both, uh, you know? We're just gonna do both. Um, so we're gonna start with um, Ruby Rose. So when I'm talking about transparency, both of these transfers are very opaque. So when I'm layering them, I don't really have to consider um, my elements showing through so much because both of these are pretty solid, not very see-through. So that's a not really an issue here. So we're just gonna pick what we like and slap it on, right? That's what we do here. And I think that um, <clears throat> if we can somehow swing a good variety of, uh, or a good amount of red and blue flowers for this piece, that would be super awesome because, you know, we got red, white, and blue, or we will have blue, but we've got red, white, and blue in our, um, flag, you know, obviously, and then maybe some red and blue flowers, and then yellow is always complementary to um, red and blue because they're the primary colors, red, blue, and yellow. They are on the color wheel, equidistant, which means they make a great color combination. It's science, so don't try to prove me wrong. Um, and then, yeah, I think we'll do a little bit of yellow flowers in there too. I did paint a piece one time that was yellow, and it had the American flag on it, and I didn't think I was going to like it, but I loved it um, because yellow just looks so good with red and blue. So um, I'm going to just go ahead and start by grabbing, okay, we're not going to use those, and let's go ahead and grab a, a good starter. That's kind of orange and red. I don't really want orange and red. I'm thinking this whole piece right here we can kind of chop up, Ooh, or this guy here. Wait, this is the same piece, isn't it? No. Or this guy down here. Uh, let's start with this guy down here, actually. So, um, basically, when I am figuring out where I want to lay my transfers, I'm looking at the space I want to fill, okay? I want to fill in this kind of um, angle here. So, let me scooch back just a little bit, and um, that way you can see what I'm talking about on the whole piece. So, if I'm looking at my piece as a whole, okay, um, what it's going to look like and how it's going to balance, um, okay, see, uh, yes, if, 
you always catch the replay if you missed the beginning or um, needed to hear something that I already covered. I'm probably, <coughs> excuse me, I'm probably going on a little bit too long here, Babylon, but I want to show you these things. So um, I'm sorry if I'm dragging it out. I'm not trying to. All right, so I'm looking at the space I want to fill. I want to fill in this kind of corner here, this little angle, and then I'm going to probably take flowers on this opposing angle and kind of mimic that shape with the cascading down like this. So what that does with flowers here and flowers here, it creates a kind of frame and it frames in, you know, the center of my piece and it also creates balance, you know, up here, down here, they're opposite. So you got a little bit on each side creating some balance, um, visual balance on your piece. So I'm seeing right away this this piece right here, see how it kind of creates that shape already? Um, let me paint it. Can you see that? Yes, I, I'm definitely going to throw some of the blues in there. That's that's a, a that's a um, that's a key, that's key. That's definitely going to happen. So, um, see this little chunk of of flowers here creates that L shape that I am trying to create on my piece with the flowers. Hello, if you're just hopping on, hello. Um, Thanks for tuning in. We are layering transfers. We went ahead and added our first layer of transfers, which is part of the, um, the, the transfer called America, which is a big fat flag transfer. So appropriate for um, the upcoming holiday. Um, but really for any time um, year round, the flag never really goes out of season or style. So right off, okay, so off the top, Right off the bat, I can see that this L shape is gonna fit perfectly right there. So here's what I'm gonna do. And let me, ex I don't know if I can explain why, I'll try. So remember how I was explaining when I put my flag stripes in here, I inset it to have this border because this part's gonna have a, a border, you know, it's kind of built in. So the top's gonna have a border. So I wanted it to kind of match or coordinate the big fat borders on the both drawers. Um, so I cut my flag to fit right inside that. So I can do the same thing with my flowers. I can cut them to fit right inside um, my little rectangle here, or I can get crazy and spill them over the edges of my drawer. And that's, my, that's what I like to do. I don't know why, I just think it looks really nice when you have your nice contained elements and then you have some added elements um, over spilling over the top or the bottom or this or wrapping around the side. Uh, I really like doing that. Uh, it's just a personal preference. Um, you don't have to do that. You can cut them to fit right here inside this shape if you wish. Um, and I also really like popping the holes where the transfer is uh, or where the hardware was and I put a transfer over and you pop the hole. It's like satisfying. I love that. Anyways, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut this approximately to the size that I need. Um, since I'm going to be wrapping the side around the back of the drawer, um, I don't need to cut it. I don't need to measure it and cut it and fit it to shape and um, make sure it's all precise and perfect to fit in a little box. Um, I can just cut it about the size that I want it. And let's see. How am I going to get this thing open? I can cut it to about the size that I want it. And um, then, hold on. Open, you son. Okay. And then um, with the excess transfer that I'm going to have, I'm going to wrap it around to the sides in the back. Okay, so um, sometimes I, I wrap it around and I take an X-Acto or a, a blade and I slice it flush with the side of the drawer. Okay, that's one way. And then sometimes I will take the excess and I just wrap it all the way around like a, like a present to the back of the drawer. Okay, does that make sense? So we'll do that here. Um, let me just figure out how, roughly how big I need my um, transfer. And so I'm just going to kind of wrap it around the drawer like I'm going to when I apply it. And then I want a little bit of that blue on there. So um, let's go ahead and just... Wrap it around, and I'm just going to kind of crease it around the back side. I'm going to give it a crease where I want to cut it. Um, like I said, again, and it doesn't have to be perfect, two sides or anything like that. You just need it roughly about the size of the space that you want to consume 
um, with that with those flowers. Okay, so now I got my crease where I am going to wrap it around the side or the sides in the back of the draw. Cut that. I'm going to fit it one more time. Make sure that I um, am liking it. So let me move you over here to, or actually I can just turn this. So see my side. Okay, see the side? I'm just going to wrap it. I'm going to leave enough space um, on the side to where I can um, wrap it around the back just like that when I'm applying it like a present. See? And then you got this nice clean edge that um, you don't have to measure it or anything like that. You just wrap it around the edge. But you don't want to have too much excess, so I'm, I'm kind of placing it so that I have about a quarter of an inch to wrap around the back. I'm not measuring it. I'm just kind of eyeballing a quarter of an inch. Um, you don't want to have too much, but it's also not a precise measurement, so don't get hung up on it and stress out about, you know, something that you don't need to stress out about, right? That's some good advice. I wish I could take my own advice. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We got it where we like it. I'm going to go ahead and peel the back um, backing paper off of my transfer piece I'm getting ready to use, okay? And be careful with it, not to let it stick to itself or any of those bad things that could happen. And um, I'm going to first line it up from the top, okay? See my little rose that's sliced off there? I don't want that to show, um, so I'm going to kind of make sure that wraps around the back a little bit. Um, but I want to make sure that I have enough play on my right hand side to um, wrap around the back. So I'm just going to kind of hold that lightly in place here and make sure that I have enough to wrap around the back. It looks like I do. Um, and the bottom, of course, that's fine. Let's see if we can turn it, tilt it a little bit more down. And then do we still have enough? Yeah, okay, we're, we're good. This is, this is right. This is where I want it. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a little um, press down to kind of commit to where I want it so it doesn't move around on me. And um, since I have those grooves, I'll show you again in case you're just hopping on or you missed it earlier. Um, the, these grooves around the edge of my piece, the transfer when I applied it, it's, cr it's cracking in the edges um, because of the way I applied it, which is fine in my scenario because I'm going to be distressing the whole piece anyway, so it's not going to matter. But if you're not distressing and you have these grooves and you want to get a transfer in there, you're going to go ahead and um, start by, okay, so earlier I showed you how to apply it from the top down. The top down, get in the groove, and then continue your way working down, get in the groove, and then all the way down. So um, you can also work from the middle out, so basically opposite. So I'm going to apply my middle and work my way up right here. Okay, I'm working my way up, and then I'm going to press it down into the groove. Just make sure it doesn't stick all the way first before you press it in the groove. <coughs> Excuse me, throat's getting dry talking so much. I'm going to rub my transfer area down on into the groove. Okay, and you can use this little hook edgy thing on your fancy dancy, fancy Nancy uh, transfer tool. Kind of make sure that that is um, nice and adhered. And then continue up. Okay, so once you got that in the groove, just continue all the way up. Rubbing on, rubbing on. Okay, so now we've got this um, bevel that we're going to go over. So we're going to press it down with our finger and take our little hook guy, take our little hook again, and we're just going to go into that bevel with our hook and make sure that it is all um, adhering um, gently. There we go. Okay. Um, all the way across. Oh, getting down in our little groove. Okay. So, and then we got another little bevel happening. It's much smaller. Um, so basically, you're just working it your way into each little groove, nook, cranny, whatever, at a time um, with your transfer. Okay. A little bit more, a little bit more time consuming, but you know it's worth it if you don't want those cracks or the cracked look, which um, I'm not. I, even though I'm distressing it, I'm going to try not to crack the flowers on these bevels, um, just in case. Just in case there, you know, there's a little spot that I don't want to be 
um, distressed looking. Does that make sense? I don't know. Maybe it doesn't make sense. All right, so now I'm going to move on to the side. Um, just like we did on the top, we're going to work our way out to the side, and then we're going to work our way out to that groove, which is right here. Okay. Ah! Ooh. Okay, so we're um, rubbing our transfer into the groove with the little, um, our little transfer tool. You can use the hook edge. That helps tremendously. Okay, and then we're going to just continue working our way out to the outside of our piece. Or our drawer anyways. And we're going to wrap it around the edge. Just like we talked about, we're going to wrap it around the edge. So we're going to go into the first little bevel with our tool. Okay, and this part gets a little bit tricky, but if you just go slow and take your time, um, you can definitely do it. It's not rocket science, it just takes a little bit of extra time, really. And uh, I mean, who doesn't have all this extra time, right? Don't we all have just all this extra time? Um, but seriously, um, yeah, just take a little bit of extra time and work it into these grooves here. Kind of baby it, okay? You got to sweet talk the transfer like it's all right, okay? You just want to lay down. You don't want to crack. You want to go um, find your little home on the face of the drawer. It's all right. It's okay. Just stick to the drawer. It's okay. You're good. So you got to baby talk it. That helps. Um, you know, build up, build up its confidence. You know. So uh, we're getting into the little grooves one at a time. Okay. So now we are going to wrap it around the side. Boom, 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 like a little present. Just like a little Christmas present. And continue to rub as best we can around the side. It's a little tricky on these kind of curved or beveled edges, but just do the best you can. And then we're going to go around to the back and rub it in to the back, just like we did on the front. Okay, boom, 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 boom. Okay. And so once we got the edge, I'm going to go ahead and actually um, kind of peel this up slowly to make sure it's all adhered to my back um, surface there. Kind of run my finger along it to make sure it's all down. All right, and then we're going to turn this piece right back around. And now we got to finish it, um, going into our groove down here. So we're rubbing, we're rubbing, we're rubbing, we're rubbing, and we're rubbing down, and now we're ready to go into our groove with our tool. Boom. Gently, gently, gently. Okay. Gently into our groove with our tool. And then I can grab the little hook end and kind of just make sure that's nice and... Um, in that groove, you know what I'm saying? Stuck in that groove. Okay, and now I'm ready to just apply the rest of it all the way down. Okay, there's one more thing I'm going to show you um, in regards to um, maybe, you know, a little tip or trick or scenario where you're like, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do with this transfer. Um, and that's these little corners here. So when you're wrapping over the top and you're wrapping over the side, you're going to have an overlap in the corner, right? Doesn't that make, I mean, I'm sure you've all wrapped a present before, so you know what I'm talking about. You go over the top and side and then you have that little flap. So we're going to work with that flap here in just a second. Um, after we get this whole thing rubbed down, we'll, we'll, we'll go over what to do with that little flap. And there's a few different uh, things you can do to kind of remedy that. And neither is necessarily rocket science or a right or wrong way or um, there's, you know, it's just kind of things that I do to make it, to minimize the look of, um, oh, we went around the corner. That's weird. There's a flap. You know, just to make it look like, look, we just want to make it look mo better, you know, mo better, not some wrinkly little mess. So. Um, all right, so we're finishing 
out going down our bottom grooves. So there's our little bevel here. It's a little bit harder underneath because my hand does not want to turn this way. Okay. Okay, we're rubbing, we're rubbing, we're rubbing. And whatever excess that you have um, on your bottom, you can hack that off with a blade, a sharp blade. Sharp is the key word. Um, or you can do what I'm going to do, and you can just roll it under and up and tuck it behind the back, just like we did on the side, but with the back, we're just tucking. And then we're tucking it, and we're rubbing the back, which is super awkward from the front to rub the back. But, hey, we're trying, okay? So we're just wrapping it like a present. All right, so now that uh, all of these should be adhered, um, we just have to deal with our little corner, little corner foldy pieces. So I'm going to turn this back this way a little bit. And let's see. Um, so I've got my little, so you, can you see the little loose kind of pieces of the transfer um, kind of just hanging there? So, and before I start pressing down the corner, because if I just start pressing it down, I'm going to have all these weird wrinkles and things on the corner of my piece. So... Um, before I start pressing it down, I'm just going to kind of remove any excess, like, flappies that are kind of hanging there. Um, and then just on the top and the bottom, kind of just smooth it out. You will probably have little um, flaps, like flat wrinkle, I don't know how to, um, where they kind of bunch up and then they lay flat, but there's a little wrinkle there. You will have that a little bit, but it's okay. I take my fingernail and I run my fingernail along it where that wrinkle happens and it peels off that excess folded um, transfer. Um, I don't know. I don't really have a good one to show you right here. That one was not a good example of the kind of mess that it can make when you're doing that. Um, oh, but see this little right here? See this little blip right here of transfer that did not come off my backing paper? See that? Okay, so like, that's an error, that's a mistake, okay, that's a transfer defect. See, I'm scratching it, it's not coming off, it's not sticky, there's no adhesive on that little bit, that little bit. Um, that's just a little defect in the transfer. It's a little, you know, three quarter of an inch um, sized um, blemish, or you know, boo-boo spot that doesn't have adhesive on it, okay. Um, it happens sometimes. Things happen. Nobody's perfect. Nothing is perfect. It doesn't matter what product, what company you ever are dealing with. They're not going to get everything spot on with no mistakes 100% of the time because things happen. Um, things out of your control, different variables, you know, machines, inks, things happen. Okay, so um, I'm not going to cry about my little spot that didn't rub off. I'm going to just figure out how to fix it. Um, and everything just about is fixable. You just kind of have to think about it for a minute and figure out a, a good solution. So this isn't an area that's going to show. So I'm not going to spend any time trying to figure out how to fix something that's not going to show. But should this happen to you in the future, um, A, if you're saving your scraps like a good girl or boy, um, you can go to your scrap pile and find a little um, petal or leaf or something in that size and shape roughly and go and you put it on your little spot that you have that is missing its little transfer piece. Okay, that's pretty easy. So you don't have any st transfer scraps laying around maybe. Maybe you have not gotten that far in your transfer career. That's okay. You can take a little bit of acrylic craft paint or chalk paint or um, uh, whatever kind of paint that you are used to working with as long as it's water-based and just paint the little, you know, matching dollop on there. Um, and I'll tell you 95% of the time, and, um, I'm just leaving that extra percent in there for good measure. 95% of the time you, no one can tell that you made a mistake and, um, made a patch for it. Um, unless you point it out, of course, <laughs> um, but no one can ever tell. So, um, sometimes you, your eye goes to, and can see it, but most of the time it doesn't. 
there was an instance where I had a, um, I had a, a keyhole molding on my piece, okay? It was a, a wood jibin keyhole molding, all detailed, and had these, you know, swirly edges, and I had a transfer that I had to go right straight over my keyhole mold. So I'm like, oh great, this is not gonna turn out very well. Um, so I, I, I placed my transfer just like I normally would. I applied it like I normally would, the best I could um, to get around the edges of the keyhole, and then I, you know, peeled off my backing paper, and it was cracked all the way around, like um, horrifically cracked, you know, like every, every little spot that could crack cracked around that keyhole molding. And um, I knew that was going to happen, um, but I knew I could fix it. So it looked awful, and I can imagine many people who are new to transfers, if that happened to them, they would probably start crying because it was very unsightly. But what I did was I took scraps of, um, you know, the same transfer, um, just because I happened to have some of the same transfer, and I cut out, you know, the little leaves and petals, and I placed them in around that keyhole molding, and you cannot tell. Um, there was a little spot that I had to take, you know, my... Um, <clears throat> paint color and touch up a little bit, but I mean it it was super easy and it took me, you know, a matter of minutes to create that little patch. So if that happens to you, don't freak out. Okay? Take a deep breath and think, you know, what how am I gonna make this so you can't see it? Am I gonna patch it up? Am I gonna touch it up with some paint in a similar color or uh slap a handle over it? <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. Don't really do that. But All right, so we're going to go ahead and peel off the rest of our backing paper on our flowers. And I'm probably, I don't have a timer on. I'm probably running way too long here. I, I feel like I've been blabbing a whole lot. Um, but I wanted to show you these things, so um, I got to. All right, so here's our flower transfer. Now we're going to go over it, burnish it really well with our palm and our fingers and our fingertips. Um Basically popping any bubbles, smoothing out any wrinkles, um, and making sure that it is applied, adhered very um, well. And that especially means going around the edges. Okay, I like to go around the edges with a fingertip and make sure those are um, nice and, because once you get an edge that starts coming up, um, then the whole thing could start coming up in the future and um, you really want to make sure your edges are nice and adhered. No flappy flaps. No flapping. No flapping transfers. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to. I'm. I'm. I'm gonna. What else do I have to do on this piece? I'm gonna hop off here. But um, show you the. See the side where it wrapped around. Can you see that? Like a little. Like a little present. Right. Okay. So that's all I got, people. I'm gonna work on the rest of this with my stars and my stripes and some mo flowers. Mo flowers. Mo flowers. Mo flowers. I don't know why, I just love the way flowers look with the flag. Um, kind of softens up a very serious um, symbol, you know what I'm saying? I think that's maybe why. Um, but anyways, then I'm going to distress the heck out of this whole piece so it looks nice and aged and distressed. Um, and then I'm going to seal it with a water-based sealer, most likely clear coat in a satin finish. Or uh, So I like to use clear wax as well, but... Um, Lately, I've just been using a satin, satin clear coat and calling it a day. So, anyways, if you have any questions or comments that I missed, which I probably did because I was too busy talking, just, uh, you know, I'll get, I'll get back to them and try to answer those here in a little bit. So, um, thanks for tuning in. I hope that now you're comfortable with band-aiding a transfer if you have to. Remember, it's no big deal. 99% of the time, it can be fixed. Um, and the other 1% of the time, it probably isn't going to show anyways, to be honest. So, um, anyways, you all have a great week. It's almost Friday, and uh, I'll see you next Thursday here in Redesign with, Pre Redesign with Prima group at noon EST. Bye.